This is uh, part one of a video or a, uh, a uh, review of the capital asset pricing model. It's a comprehensive review, I like to call it. Um, it's a, uh, the capital asset pricing model is a very elegant uh, solution to finding the proper discount rate when valuing equities or any uh, free cash flow sequence. So one of the things that we learn about in finance is the ability to take a series of cash flows, whether they are free cash flows, which we could talk about in a further video, or whether that's EBITDA, of earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization, and, and, and any type of positive cash flow, and discounting it back to find a value today, almost like the way you'd find the value of a bond. So, as important as that is, you need a discount rate, you need a proper discount rate. And the capital asset pricing model is the most elegant in that it incorporates a number of um, theories and market, uh, it's actually, what I like about it is it reflects the activity that exists in the equity markets. So it's not just the theoretical in nature, but also a reflection of what uh, investors truly feel when they create an equilibrium in the markets. But there are a number of assumptions that are made and it assumes that investors are rational and risk averse. So that means that an investor will value a company's assets based on a very rational and um, risk neutral set of uh, assumptions, which we know that over the last number of years with the advent of uh, more acceptable theories in terms of behavioral economics that investors are not always rational and risk averse, that, that, that they are driven by a number of uh, emotional responses such as framing or um, risk aversion or um, where they will apprise an equal gain much more than an equal loss or will they frame a, uh, a risk in terms of uh, previous uh, or, the, or they will more cherish information that, that is obtained previously than information that they learned about uh, a week ago or a month ago. There's a number of these theories. And with the uh, Nobel Prize being won by Richard Thaler this year, uh, he was a famed or a, uh, a leader in the, in, the, in, the, in the canon of behavioral economic thought, these, um, uh, these, these assumptions start to become kind of challenged in financial theory, but we assume that at any rate because we need an assumption and a starting point for this. We also assume that investors are price takers and cannot influence the price of a stock. Uh, that means that the supply demand dynamic that exists within um, the markets uh, where Microsoft or IBM or Apple trade constantly, that that is just a function of uh, where thousands and b thousands of investors and billions of dollars have decided that the supply demand uh, paradigm uh, should create the price and not that any one influencer could move the stock too much and kind of throw out the theory that this is an independent view of many investments. Uh, finally, we, we, we assume that, uh, that when we talk about the risk-free rate, which we'll talk more about in a minute, that you have immediate liquidity using the risk-free rate. That in this case, it's the 10-year treasury and that that represents a true risk-free rate and that there is immediate liquidity and also that one can trade without friction. So that means that we don't factor in uh, the possibility of um, that, that there will be commissions or that the markets will not be readily tradable or not liquid. So these are the assumptions of using the capital asset pricing model. In our next video, we're going to go over the formula and we'll start to talk a bit about how the formula breaks down.